Let's do a little mini Bible study together because I know many of you don't read your Bible. So I'm going to read the Bible to you so that you can get a little bit of the, the Bible inside of you ingested and uh, understand that the Bible is the authority of God. It's the Word of God. And so when the devil comes and snoops out and, and messes with you and this and that, this is how Jesus Christ, he didn't have a dialogue or a conversation with the devil. He rebuked him with the scriptures. So the more scriptures you have, the more defense you have. My wife, she got attacked nasty by the devil a couple of years back. Mental uh, attack that she was losing her mind. Really bad, really bad. And do you know that it was a defining moment in her life. She didn't have uh, an arsenal of, of scriptures in her heart to really go and retract and use it against the devil. She didn't, she didn't have that. So she was a victim in that season. As soon as she got out of the, uh, that season, you know, God uh, restored her. But then she's like, yeah, I got to learn. I got to learn God. I got to learn. You know, she, she's about God's business now. Whereas before she was a, a seat warmer and she was a, she was a, you know, a, a, spectic, a skeptic, you know, watching other Christians uh, run their race, but not so much being in the race herself until she, she had no choice but to get into it. So let me read you a couple of scriptures. These are random scriptures that I have in my Bible here. And, um, and a lot of the scriptures... Take it as face value. Some things are parables, but some things are just take it at face value. For example, let's read in Hosea 14.9 as an example. It says, who is wise? Let them realize these things who is discerning. Let them understand the ways of the Lord, that they are right. The righteous walk in them, but the rebellious stumble in them. So that at face value, it's asking the question, who is wise out there? And then it says, let them realize these things. And then it says, who is discerning? Who can understand it? Who can, who can uh, put this puzzle together? Those that understand that uh, they walk in the way, and, and, and the righteous, uh, they walk in the ways of the Lord, and they are considered righteous. But the rebellious, the stiff-necked, the people that that the rule breakers usually those are the people that belong to the devil uh, because I remember when I was on that side of the fence uh, breaking the rules was uh, second nature to me uh, remember like there was this no smoking sign and we were on vacation and there was a no smoking big no smoking sign and I took it I took a I made it a point to go right under the sign in front of everybody because I wanted everybody to see and spark up a cigarette right under the sun and it was that attitude that rebellious attitude that the Bible is referring to right here and it's saying you know that they stumble in everything that they do um, in other passages in the Bible it, take, it, it says how God deals with them you know um, but you know I, I, I got dealt with you know but I'm, I'm grateful because as I got dealt with those things, you know, uh, got purged out of me, you know. Um, let's read another one. Let's say, uh, Joel 2.28. I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams and your young men will see visions. Now, it's referring to in the last days. And we're living in the last days right now. And I made a video earlier today about... God pouring out His Spirit on our flesh. Now, the things with God, you know, for the most part, they're all gifts. It's by grace that you get them. It's not by earned or deserved. It's not by working for it. It's not by striving. It's not by any of that. It's more so like a humbling of yourself. It's coming to recognition that you need Him. This is these are the ingredients that that makes you put put you put you in a position to to receive from God. First, you need to humble yourself. Humble yourself. That's a big one right there. Because too many people come haughty and proud, um, entitled, you know, give me this, I'm entitled. Don't play that. Don't play that. Nobody deserves a thing, right? It's by grace. And so, it's like, 
come humble and um, and meek. You know, these these are the things that catch God's attention in His eye. You know, and uh, and come genuine, and, and then ask for what you want. You know, and that's that's the recipe uh, for getting that. And uh, let's read one la one last one. It says Amos eight eleven. It says the days are coming, declares the Sovereign Lord, when I will send a famine through the through the land not a famine of food or of thirst for water but a famine of hearing the words of the Lord meaning he's going to uh, take a step back and watch people uh, need him and they're going to thirst and hunger for him he's going to take a step back and he's just going to see like what are you going to do without me kind of thing how far are you really going to get and this and that there's going to be people that that um, lean into God and, and they, they, they press in and they look for God and they don't they don't give up on God and, and go into their old ways again. They're going to stay right there and wait for God. Be still and know that I'm God. There's going to be people that, that stay faithful to God even when God takes a step back. And then there's going to be other people that say, well, God is not in the picture. And it's going to be one of those things that, like, what are they going to do? You know, what are they going to do? And, uh, and it's just a good question because it, it, it really defines the heart of a, of, a, of a person, right? I made other videos about layers and how people are made up of many various layers. And uh, on, the, on, on, on the surface, your layer could be like, I love God, this, that, and the other. But when you peel that layer back and you go through hard times, what comes out then? And when you feel pressed and suffocated by life and some turmoil and trouble and this and that, you feel like, where's God at? Then when those doubts and fears and anxieties, you know, they have a role in your life. Are you going to, you know, what, 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 what's that going to say about you? Uh, where you at there? So God... You know, I know God to be a God that works on the inside Like a mechanic works on an engine He likes to work on your heart, your soul, your spirit He likes to work on the inside of your thoughts He wants you He's always, you know, he reads our minds He, he, he cares about what's going on on the inside Because he understands that If everything is, is good in the engine, so to speak If everything's working, then the car's going to run smoothly So the outside doesn't matter as much The inside is what matters and so God really cares about the inside. So, you know, uh, the way that we we work on our insides is by first and foremost giving God time, you know, watching godly things, hearing godly content. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So we give God our time, give God our energy. We pray, you know, and we have faith and trust and abide in him through our actions and our deeds on earth. It's not complicated. But it does take your it does take your focus and your concentration to 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 do it. It takes your interest. It takes your your desire, right? And sometimes you have to stoke stroke the the desire and the the interest because you have to do it on purpose. Apostle Paul said, "I I um I beat myself into submission." Apostle Paul said, "I I I I beat my flesh down so that my spirit can live like." Like, you know, even when I don't want to get on my knees and pray, I force myself. That's what Apostle Paul said. This is the type of attitude and mentality we have to have. It's like, it's like, don't go by feelings. I made a video uh, about feelings, uh, I think it was yesterday, and I lost a couple of subscribers uh, because I was talking about how feelings, demons use it. Yeah, bro, it, it's absolutely true. Uh, the way I took that when I lost those subscribers, I could only think of, you know, what... First of all, I wish him the best, but it's more so like if the truth offends you, then I, I can't help you. Because the truth is the truth in the end of the day. It's just, it is what it is. For example, I can back it up with scripture. The Bible says, I did not give you a spirit of fear. Fear to most people is an emotion. Uh, but I gave you a spirit of, of peace, of power, uh, uh, of love. Love peace and power now the most of these things will be attributed if you if you told 
uh, a psychologist, you think, I feel powerful. They would say, you feel an emotion. I feel love. Well, you feel an emotion. Yeah, I feel fear. I love. That's an em a powerful emotion. So th that's what they contributed as. And that's what I was saying in my video yesterday. I was like, don't follow your emotions because a lot of the the spirits in this world, they, they, that's how they get you to move in, in that direction. I feel like smoking weed. And then they, they usher you into that 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 place of smoking, drinking, doing the, the wrong things. They use emotions, they use feelings. And a lot of demons, they have this down pat. They've been here millions of years. They understand how to do it. And so, yeah, that's what the video is on. But apparently it offended a couple of people. But in the end of the day, uh, I, I, I might change this to the truth channel, <laughs> you know, because that's all I give you guys. I give you the truth. God bless you. I got to go. Love you.